This week's video is about a pen with a silver nib made by a one-man company called Eureka. He goes by MacGyver on YouTube and I'll leave the information down below in the description box. The pen I'm reviewing today actually belongs to Jacob of Fudafan. For some reason, the pen could not be mailed to the suburbs of Tokyo, but only to downtown Tokyo. So Jacob asked to have it mailed to my house and kindly let me do a review on it. David of Eureka made a post in Fountain Pen Network last October. He calls himself the Fountain Pen Researcher. He is from South Korea and claims to make everything on the pen except for the converter. The pens are made of Japanese ebonite and the nibs he actually makes himself and they're out of argentium silver, which is really astonishing. Intrigued, Jacob ordered this pen, the Symmetry Dodecagon 12-sided Tamenuri Urushi ebonite pen with an argentium nib. I had never even heard of a silver nib before this post last year and certainly have never written with one. I had tried to order a pen but was too late, but now I'm on the mailing list. This is a large, beautiful pen and I really enjoyed writing with it. Let's go over some basic silver stuff first. There are several kinds of non-plated solid silver. This spoon is made of coin silver. Coin silver is 90% silver and 10% other metals. Coins were actually made of this silver before 1964. This spoon is made of sterling silver. It is 92.5% silver and the rest is other metals, usually copper. That is why you see 925 printed on sterling silver pieces. Both coin silver and sterling silver tarnishes easily in humid areas or polluted areas because of the sulfur. When we lived in Hawaii, my silver tarnished very easily because of the VOG, which is volcanic smog. The sulfur and humidity would react with the silver and just turn it black. So Argentium silver was developed at the Art and Design Research Institute at Middlesex University. It was primarily made to stop tarnishing in jewelry. Here is Argentium silver wire for jewelry making and then here is sterling silver. They both function the same, but Argentium silver tarnishes a lot slower. That is because for the majority of the alloy part of the metal, germanium is used. Pure silver is 99.9 .9 silver, but argentium silver is either 93.5, which is more silver than sterling silver, or 96% silver. As some of the Eureka nibs are printed with 935, I'm assuming he's using 93.5 argentium silver. Here it just says Argentium right next to the section. Now let's take a look at the pen. All of Eureka pens are made of ebonite from Japan and this one is covered in urushi. The lip of the cap looks like it's thick enough and sturdy. And if you look at the inside with the flashlight, the threads look clean and feel real good. It also has a step on the inside of the cap where the end of your section will go up against to make a nice seal to keep the ink on your nib wet. It looks like it takes just under two full rotations to uncap the pen. The section unscrews from the barrel and it feels like the threads for both the cap and the inside part of the section are nice and smooth. The section is really long and then it has a standard converter that you push in pull out. It appears that the nib and feed is friction fit but I don't want to pull it out since it's not my pen. And the feed is made of ebonite. He goes into detail on one of his videos about how he does the difficult process of making as many fins on his ebonite feed as a standard plastic feed. 
so you have the best parts of both the plastic feed and an ebonite feed. You have a distinct drop off from the barrel to the section, but this is mitigated by the fact that the section is so long that you can hold anywhere along in there and not be bothered by that drop off or the threads. This is how the pen looks unposted and you cannot post this particular pen. This Symmetry Dodecagon pen has 12 sides and when you tighten it lightly they don't quite line up but if you tighten it real well they do. So the fit and finish of this ebonite pen is excellent and then the Urushi is shiny and glossy. Let's compare it to a couple other pens. As you can see, it just barely fits into my tray. And compared to a Pilot Decimo, it's just nuts. Even with the long knock on the Decimo, it just gets dwarfed by the pen. Here it is next to a Franklin Christoph 46. And here it is uncapped. Again, it's still dwarfed by it. Though the nibs just aren't that much different in size. I'm thinking it's a size 6-ish nib. Here it is next to a Platinum 3776 Century. And then next to the 3776 Century uncapped. And then next to a Pilot Kakuno. And then next to it uncapped and it still dwarfs it. And then the nib is much smaller than the Eureka nib. And then next to a Mont Blanc 149, and they both feel like they're kind of the same girth. But once you uncap them, you can see that the 149 has a thicker section than the uh, Eureka pen. But the Eureka has a much longer section. And here they are side by side. As far as tarnish on the nib, Eureka sent a silver polishing cloth that you can rub on the nib to get it off. He also says in one of his videos that you can dip the nib into silver tarnish remover liquid. And that liquid would not affect the ebonite, but I don't know what it would do to Urushi. He said that tarnish would not affect the performance of the pen at all. I think when you're rinsing out the pen, you can just kind of rub it a little bit with your paper towel or whatever, and that should help keep the tarnish off too. I found that the nib is already starting to tarnish a little bit, and that this nib tarnishes faster than other Argentium silver I've worked with, but mainly because it is in much more harsher conditions. It stays wet all the time with the ink, which really encourages tarnishing. So I'm actually quite impressed with this nib. The nib has Argentium printed near the section and a kind of Greek Sigma symbol that might be E for Eureka. And then Eureka in capital letters would drop shadowing. It's a pretty cool looking nib. Okay, let's ink it up. And since Marazen Athena Eternal Blue is Jacob's favorite ink color, that's what we'll use. This is a darker, clear blue that behaves well. And inking it up is pretty standard. It writes smoothly with a slight amount of feedback. I don't know if that's something that you would want to mess with, but I like a little bit of feedback in my pens. The center of gravity is more toward the front end of the pen, which I also enjoy, and the reason why many collaborations with Sailor end up with a metal section. That's to force the center of gravity more to the front. He shows in one of his videos that the Argentium nib is quite flexible and he really cranks on the nib. I don't want to do that because this isn't my pen but it certainly isn't as soft as a standard Pilot 14 karat gold pen nib. And unlike many other 14 karat gold nibs, it doesn't really have a lot of bounce to it. When slightly pressed, it will make a wider line and then a little bit of a snapback for a thinner line, but not quite as responsive as say like a flex pen. So I see no real advantage over a kind of soft 14 karat gold nib, but it definitely has a lot more flex than say a stainless steel nib. 
The nib width appears to be somewhere around a fine medium or a Japanese medium size. So I would say that it acts kind of like a platinum 14 karat nib when you're just writing normally and then a little bit like a noodler's flex nib when you're kind of pressing on it. I really enjoy this pen and would like to purchase one myself. The website is a little bit difficult to navigate and it's hard to find prices. He just releases batches of pens and then sells them out. I saw an older batch that he had already closed out for sale and it looked like the ebonite pens with an argentium nib run about $150. There's many things to like about this pen. I like supporting smaller makers. I like that he makes all the parts of the pen except for the converter. I like that he uses Japanese ebonite for the body and including the feed which is harder to come by now. And as a mineral collector, it's a silver nib. That's pretty cool. And he's supposed to be working on a platinum nib. I'm really looking forward to that.